Nathan, uh, by the way, I see you sold the flamethrower that was <laughs> behind you the last time we spoke. Now you've got a, uh, I don't know, it looks like a, a transgender uh, assault weapon. What the heck is that thing? Well, that, that was a, a conversation piece created by our own um, gun wizard, uh, James, <laughs> the XD man, Nicholas. But that's our boogaloo gun uh, that, that re represents the boogaloo movement. And uh, yeah, it's it's a conversation piece. <laughs> oh, boy, the boogaloo movement. Uh, those guys are uh, well, we'll have to talk about them. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, the boogaloo boys. Come on, man. Right, they're bad news, right? All right. Uh, we well, got it. We well, got I'm we, sure they are. But it, it was we were paid to do the gun. And, you know, so we did it. <laughs> All right. Of course, everything within the law, and you are operating very much in the law down there at Blunt County Tactical. Nathan Kirk, thank you, sir. And uh, let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. That's fun. Uh, there's uh, Greg Kelly uh, interviewing this gun shop owner, or I guess worker there, and he has a transgender gun hanging over his shoulder, you know, because colors mean transgender. <laughs> okay. Whatever, uh, but he was paid to do it. Now I, I felt that discomfort there uh, as they were talking about the Boogaloo gun because it's the Boogaloo movement, which apparently this guy has no idea what it is. But Greg Kelly kind of didn't want to be connected to it. These are some reasons why. Uh, so according to NBC News, the Boogaloo movement, it's an anti-government movement that advocates for violent uprising targeting liberal po uh, political opponents and law enforcement and wants a second civil war. And the current Boogaloo movement was first noticed by extremism researchers in 2019 when fringe groups from the gun rights and militia movements to white supremacists began referring to an impending civil war and using the word Boogaloo, which is joking reference to Breaking 2, Electric Boogaloo, which is a 1984 movie about breakdancing. I don't know the connection, they just thought it was a funny word. But Greg Kelly understood what this was that he was, that he was potentially being connected to with this guy in his gun shop. Um, and he wanted nothing to do with it. So we're finding some level of standards, but he couldn't fully say, hey, you mean a boogaloo gun? What the hell is that about, David? Yeah, it's it's amazing that we, we have finally found the line, I guess, for some conservative media, and that's at violent uprising. That's where they draw the line. But understand, they don't draw the line there because they care. They draw it there because they're afraid of potential financial ramifications or legal ramifications for you know engaging and propping up the Boogaloo Boys. So it's all done here. His attempt to try and you know question the brief questioning there was about this. It, it's all done to, to just protect Newsmax, you know, legally and financially. Um, but it's, you know, this is the, <laughs> these are the kinds of people they have on now. Just like, hey, this, these gun nuts, like these are just regular guests. This is a, a normal day at Newsmax. Well, the whole point is not to really spread any kind of news or, or talk about things that the folks that they're looking to support or that they're looking to support will do for the country. What their agenda is, uh, uh, what, what's what's on the slate of legislation. It's crazy how that works. Maybe these guys are legislator govern in a way that actually helps people. They're not looking for that. And I think it's illustrated this. Let's jump down to the next uh, site, you guys, because as Greg Kelly was interviewing this guy, I mean, he, this is what's happening with Sean Handy with Donald Trump as well, I believe it was yesterday. They're asking very normal questions like, so what is your opposition to President Biden? Which is a very basic normal question I would I would think, but this is the answer that he came up with. Wait, why do you feel, I assume you're not a Joe Biden fan, <laughs> and there are lots of reasons to choose from, but for you, why are you dissatisfied in this president? Well, just from the beginning, policy is completely different from what my personal belief, you know, system aligns with. I don't, you know, I'm I'm basically anti everything that he represents. I I love the Second Amendment. I love the First Amendment. I'm I'm anti-abortion. You know, I'm I'm pro-life. This guy is definitely anti everything that I am. So right off the bat, you know, of course, he was somebody that I was not going to vote for and will not support. Um, and then you throw into things, you know, throw into the way he uh, handled Afghanistan uh, exit and, and things like that. It's just it's it's pathetic. It's not uh, no nothing I'll ever support. That was a devastating uh, dissertation about what he's against Joe Biden about. I'm gonna get your thoughts first because I listed the few things that he said. Dave. Yeah, I mean, these people have no real, uh, I was gonna say ideology, but they, they have an ideology, but they have no real criticism or awareness of what the administration is doing or has done. I mean, you know, we can 
we know why we don't like or do like what Biden has done. You know, he didn't work hard enough to pass Build Back Better um, on Afghanistan. I think it's actually one of his, you know, one of the stronger points for Joe Biden is actually pulling out of that in the face of all the media uh, scrutiny around that, as well as his approach to uh, his leveled approach to Ukraine. But you know, you ask a conservative because the, a lot of the focus is simply on the cultural moments, what's happening, you know, month to month. If it's today, it's Mr. Potato Head. Tomorrow, it's something else. So they're they're not really aware of what Biden has actually done because he hasn't really done all that much. Nothing has really changed. And if anything, the right has gained in terms of their cultural issues or what what they've been pushing for when it comes to issues like he brought up with being anti-abortion. I mean, there have been gains for the right since Biden has come into office. So the idea that Biden somehow has changed everything and his life is all different now, it's just it's BS because nothing has really changed. It was illustrative in the way he was talking is that if you look at what happened in Afghanistan, if you look what's happened with the first and second amendment, if you look at this, we're looking at it. What about those things? That's a very much the Donald Trump line, which if you listen to him for five minutes talking about what it is he wants to do to Trump, it's always look at this and look at that. I'm looking, what do you not like about it and what would you do differently? It's the one thing that they can't answer. So what is it about the first and second amendment that this guy was rambling about that Joe Biden has usurped and has taken down? Cause he's talking on television. Your first amendment is there. Uh, Second amendment, you have a wall of guns behind you. Oh my God, he's after your second amendment rights. The thing is every time they talk about what Democrats are doing to take and dismantle their rights, those things are hovering around them. But every time we talk about things that conservatives are doing that actually we don't talk about, uh, uh, women's right is taken down. They're still coming after civil rights for LGBTQ community across the nation. This is happening. They're going after teachers because the way they're teaching actual history. So when actual legislation happens that are negative towards Americans, it's always from Republicans, but they complaining constantly about what Democrats are doing, which is not Nothing. It's it's just it's the way our political discourse is now. Just say one thing is happening when it's not, and when something actually is happening, just shut up and ignore it. And both sides just allow this to just go on.